Moving right along, and our first guest tonight is an actor and screenwriter. He's the writer and star of Let's Get Skase, ABC's Hollow Men, and currently can be seen on Channel 10's Offspring. Gives me great pleasure to please welcome to the show Mr. Lockie Hume. <laughs> Welcome, Lockie. <clears throat> Tom, thanks for having me. Mate, thank you for coming on the show. I hear these chairs are wonky. They are definitely wonky and they're up on a slight, on a slight raise there. Ooh. Firstly, how are you? I'm good, mate. I thought I'd dress up for you. I thought I'd showbiz the joint up a little bit. Yeah, it can't be showbiz no. down much more, no. so thank you. Yeah. We appreciate it. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. In fact, I was actually looking at some of your stuff on YouTube, Tom, and it occurred to me that... Uh, uh, <clears throat> That uh, all the great Tonight Show hosts have the microphone on their desk. <laughs> and uh, somehow we're lacking that. We are. On this incredible expensive set that we've put together here we in Studio A. I'm scared if we start listing the things this show is lacking, though, we'll run out of time. Well, I had this idea that, uh, had this idea that maybe um, I'd go and get you... Uh, microphone. No, you did it. That, that's not going to cause any problem for us there, is it? That's Definitely good. not. It kind of looks like a nice little nightclub set. This is got beautiful. Now. Cheers, mate. Welcome back. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you for being our first guest. <laughs> I struggle with champagne. I do. My nose... I don't think that is champagne. Inside. I think that's gravy that didn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> so I... Um, Soft on the palate. Mm, yeah, amongst other places. So I went searching for a, mi <laughs> searching for a microphone for you. And uh, so I went down to uh, Chapel Street Bazaar on um, yeah. uh, Chapel on Chapel Street, <laughs> and uh, so I went looking for one of those broadcast microphones. Leno's got one. Letterman's got one. Carson had one. Conan O'Brien's got one. Jimmy Kimmel's got one. Yeah. For God's sake, they gave one to Jimmy Kimmel. Wow, <laughs> Jimmy Kimmel, a man who only has three and a half million Twitter followers. How do I not have the same treatment? Who knows? It's not for me to say. Get a better manager. So. <laughs> I went, uh, went searching for this microphone for you, Tom, and I thought, you know, I'm going to get this for you as a gift. That's what I was going to bring out for you tonight, because I like you, Tom. I really like you. Thanks, Lockie. Appreciate it. You've got that X factor. <laughs> and uh, so I went down to Chapel Street Bazaar on Chapel Street and um, <clears throat> found the microphone. Ha yeah. 675 bucks. And where I is it? Don't like you that much, as it turns Damn out. Damn it! Um, <laughs> It's the end of that. What would it have had to go down to? 150 was the max I was prepared to go to. Mate, I'm pretty impressed. Well, I mugged a tourist on the way there, so <laughs> I had 150 ready to buy, so that was it. Well, I appreciate the thought. Thank you very much. My pleasure, Tom. Um, now, and also, you're the first person <clears throat> to ever bought a gift on this show? Well, it's really a gift for sharing, though, isn't it? <laughs> it is. But I, I, I appreciate it. <laughs> and uh, also, I should mention, while we're speaking of first, yeah. you're also the first guest we've ever had on that starred in their own video game? Well, it wasn't my video game. OK. Technically, I'm the first. It wasn't just me. It was myself and Jada Pinkett Smith were the first two actors to star in a video game, to put on the motion capture suits and... Covered in the silver yeah. balls. In my case, I look like 10 pounds of shit in a five-pound bag. But, uh, yeah... Did we... they make unitard up? Did you have to unitard? Well, we, it's the one and only time I've worn a G-string was when they had to do the... Uh, they do this... They put you in this massive chamber. It's like getting a CAT scan. And you sort of stand with your arms out and they do this full body scan so they can digitise you and then you go in and do the mocap stuff. And that was for the Matrix. Right. For the video games, was, so. was it in, Have you done that kind of stuff before, motion catches? No. Well, as I said, we were the first actors to ever do it. Right, great. So we should have written a sort of how-to book and we could have made a fortune because it's now the norm for everything. And the how-to would have included how to properly... Uh, attach the G-string to one's body. If you say so, Tom. <laughs> I like that, Lockie. Yeah. Not pandering to a bad joke by, no, by a host. Not Very at all. Good. It wasn't even bad. It was almost stillborn. But anyway, Tom, <laughs> let's get on with it. Now, uh, congratulations on the success of Offspring as well. Thank you. Uh, you're shooting at the moment, I yes, believe. Yes, I am. OK. And uh, excited about the show coming back? Yeah, it's, uh, it's great. First of all, it's nice to have a steady paycheck. But uh, it, um, you know, I don't know who saw it last season, but it's... It rated its it, ass off. It did very well, and uh, hopefully we'll do well again. But it's, it's a lot meatier this season. There's a lot more... There's a lot more going on. 
okay. this season. So that's pretty much... I mean, I can tell you everything that's happening if you're interested, but it would just ruin it for you and I'd probably get fired. So let's not go down that path. Well, Lockie, I have, I have a lot that I want to talk to you sure. about. Now, not only... I'm a big fan of yourself and I have been... Uh, over the years. I know that, Tom. You've also... <laughs> <laughs> I've got to stop sending that, you those letters, don't no, I? I know. I, uh, but you've also worked with, in my mind, the kind of... the elite of the elite of Australian yes, comedians. I have. Uh, you've worked with all the working dog guys. You've worked mm -hmm. with... Uh, well, I've worked like... with everybody from the D generation. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, so... uh, it, was Boytown the first time you'd worked with these guys? Yeah, it was. Well, I'd met Mick Malloy and Bob Franklin doing Macbeth, which we yep. shot just before... Boytown, and it was I, we, we were shooting Macbeth up in Mount Macedon, and Mick and I went to Mount Macedon pub to have a drink after work one night, and I didn't really know Mick that well. Bob Franklin came along, and we were sitting there having a drink, and I said to Mick, "Oh, what are you doing after? What are you, you got, got a film coming up, you know, to follow up Cracker Jack?" And he started telling me about Boytown. And I said, oh, is, who else is in it? And he said, oh, Wayne Hope's in it. And, you know, Bob's going to be in it. And Glenn Robbins is going to be in it. And I said, is Tony Martin going to be in it? And he said, yeah, we're going to get Tony in there. And I said, I will play a non-speaking extra. I will play like a bartender on the proviso that the scene is with all of you. So I can at least tick that box on my bucket list. Yeah. It's like, OK, I've been in a scene with all of you. And they ended up offering me the role of Marty Boomstone. Which is a great character, the yeah. band manager. Mm. You got to film some... Uh, a fantastic extra scene that uh, Marty Bernstein does yeah. to camera. For those who haven't seen it, this, this interview with Marty goes through, it's you talking to camera, you mm. go through, do you know how many different locations you go through? We went through every location we shot on the film, so it would have been 50 plus easily. It's brilliant. Well, Tony Martin wrote it. Right. So the, and Tony's behind the camera sort of throwing you lines yep. at me as we're doing it. And that was, <clears throat> it's a little bit called Meet Marty Bernstein. For some reason on the IMDb, Tony has credited me as a co-writer, but that's only because I wrote one line in that sort of ridiculous monologue. Was it a ripping line? No, it was terrible. But <laughs> Tony's, a very, Tony's a very generous man. Look, I'm getting a little... You're being a terrible host here. Sorry, it's mate. My ridiculous. apologies. Now, <sighs> hey, Lockie, I, I also wanted to ask you, I've always known your work mostly, um, mostly from the world of funny. Mm. But all the research I did, because I'm an incredibly studious host, yeah. all the research I did on you... The prominent feature of your acting in all your bios was how intense an actor Lockie Hume yeah, is. Yeah, but you see, I'm not a comedian, though. That's the thing, all right? Like, I just get cast with these guys in funny roles. But I know you're heading towards a bit here, Tom. I don't want to <laughs> stick you up because I'm sure it's going to be hilarious. <laughs> well, <laughs> if, it, if it's not, I'm just going to pin you with a co-writing credit. Hey. Now, uh, I wanted to see just how intense you could get, Mr. Shume. Sure. I have three lines that I would call very unintense. Not even a word. Let's move on. Uh, would you mind delivering these lines uh, straight down the barrel of the, mm -hmm. of the camera and let's see how intense you can get? Sure. Which, which camera am I let's, let's shoot down this one right here. Okay. Uh, the first one. You see right there. <coughs> you, no, you, you read them out to me, Tommy, and I'll read them. To okay. The first one is, I'll have a skinny hot chocolate with extra marshmallows, please. I'll have a skinny hot chocolate with extra marshmallows. <laughs> Line number two, my kitten Schnookums is the cutest thing in the world. My, my kitten Schnookums is the cutest thing in the world. <laughs> <laughs> and Lockie Hume, the last unintense line that you're going to make intense, my underwear has ridden up the crack of my butt and is a little uncomfortable. My underwear has ridden up the crack of my butt, it's a little uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Rocky, you're going to uh, you're going to stick us, stick around and help us out with a sketch later on. I aim, I aim to please, Tom, when it comes to you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please thank the amazing Mr. Rocky Hume.